A vehicle, your vehicle, is a collection of unfortunate angles, thin metal, cloth, plastics, glass, and electronics. The average automobile is not designed as a fighting platform. It provides very little concealment and almost no cover. Now, second thing to consider when we talk about the vehicle, be it truck, sedan, SUV, whatever, is the fact that besides our home, it's a place where we're most likely to feel the most comfortable and be the least situationally aware. Even though you have to operate the vehicle, your day-to-day -day concerns with places that you normally travel to are focused on point A to point B. They aren't necessarily focused on paying attention to the world around you. The vulnerability is very real. And something that you will learn in this class that you can combat. That's what it would usually be if I was driving. Right! Are we shooting? Yeah, we're good. Yeah. Now I'd probably end up right in here. Yeah, now think about where I'm at. The bad guy. Not bad. Driver side threat. What? You gotta go. Oh. I got a question. What's For that? the passenger side? Yeah. Should I clear my seatbelt like that or it's up to you. What that's, are you more comfortable with? Because I felt like I just cleared it on It looks instinct. great. Okay. No, if, if that's the way you're going to do it, keep with it. Okay. Just be aware that now the seatbelt is between your arms. Yeah. Which, obviously, we have pretty good spatial awareness. If you have to exit the vehicle, you're going to figure that out pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you're just naturally going to clear that seatbelt and work through the seatbelt, then just go ahead and stick with that. Okay. Cool. Open the door. But if I'm in holster in the car... I've got to clear a cover garment, and that's not accounting for the seatbelt. We'll talk about that. I've got to be able to clear the cover garment, get the gun out, and then I've got to be able to present it to the window. Can I shoot from here? Absolutely. Do I have to get to a full presentation? No. Now keep in mind, I may be aiming the gun through a window. So can I go full presentation? Not with that window there. Now, if I shoot the window out, yeah, but what if it's a decision shooting? What if I've got a guy tapping on my window with a knife? Gun trumps knife, uh, usually. So if I come out and show him the gun, might he rethink his life choices? Yeah, but can I go full presentation? No. Am I going to take the time to roll the window down? No, no absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm inside the vehicle. Okay, for right-handed people, same thing. We're not talking about the seat belt yet. I draw the weapon. How do I get it to the window? Right here... I'm going to come out of the holster and go right across the body and punch it out. Can I punch out if the window's up? No. So I need to be prepared to shoot from here if I have to. If the steering wheel is closer to my body, I can come out, ride the steering wheel up, and get my gun in position. But anytime I'm able to immediately shortcut, make that shortcut, immediately go like this, that's what I'm going to do. If the guy's got can I use the other hand for something else? What if he's trying to open the door? What if my door's unlocked? and we're in a wrestling match. Hopefully the gun will say, okay, the wrestling match is over. But if I'm trying to keep him from accessing the vehicle until I'm able to hit him with the door or let him have it, and hopefully he just falls down because now he's gotten everything he wanted and more. When I'm inside the cabin, I'm severely limited with travel. I can go like that. From the other side, I can come up and go like this. But my body position isn't the traditional shooting stance. I can't even really get the gun in a traditional shooting position without really fighting back versus if I just come up and go in tuck inside the body. As long as the slide's not going to hit me in the chest to cause a malfunction on the gun, I have no problems at all shooting just like this. Just like that. Now let's bring the seatbelt into the equation. So we're talking about a spontaneous response, like this guy's already right here. Can I draw left-handed without taking the seatbelt off? Yes. But now where's the seatbelt? Right? You see how the gun's hitting the seatbelt? Nine times out of ten, that's what's going to happen. So as I draw, I need to get around the seatbelt if possible. Or, as I draw, I unhook the seatbelt and come at it. Those are your options for left hand. Now, right-handed, can I simultaneously start my draw and disengage the seatbelt? If I bring my support hand into it, yeah. Do I need to? Depending on where you carry. Does anybody here carry appendix? 
every once in a while. So appendix is obviously, it's gonna be a little easier as long as you pre-position that lap belt, you shouldn't have any problems at all. Some people can't carry appendix comfortably seated in a car. So if you're gonna carry on the body in the vehicle, make sure you know your draw path is clear so you don't have to really concern yourself with the seat belt suddenly. Right now, I know if I'm carrying in my normal carry position right-handed, I don't need to clear the seat belt immediately. I can get my weapon out. If the steering wheel is closer, I can come up, go around the top of the steering wheel, or I can come underneath it and get it up. So that's talking about side window threats. Makes sense. Another option I have for exiting the vehicle, if I'm coming out, is literally just keep the, the weapon high center chest. Come out like that and like that. Now, would I maintain high center chest for rearward movement? If I gotta move to the back of my vehicle for to use it for concealment or cover? Can I do that and move pretty quick? Am I gonna do it though? Under high stress, might I not just be like... As long as the weapon's pointed in a safe direction, it really doesn't necessarily matter. But again, tight quarters, say, say it goes down in a parking spot and there's another car right here. Now I'm in a, now I'm in a hallway, I gotta get out of it. What if I gotta move forward? Obviously if I move forward, I can keep my gun high center chest on my threat. I've seen some people exit the vehicle, well basically they'll bring the gun down which to me doesn't make a whole lot of sense for two reasons. One, because I might muzzle my leg. And two, because if my threat is still a threat in this general area, I need to have the gun somewhere where I can immediately engage the threat and I don't have to worry about bullshit. Make sense? Does anybody have a different way to do it? I was always taught yeah. to keep it in position school. Yeah, see, I don't... <laughs> I wouldn't, and my thing, Sewell's a great position, but it gets overused. It's becoming the new, like, ready position, and I don't like that. Uh, obviously, Temple Index, for me, being a left-handed shooter, doesn't make as much sense, because my gun is already on the outside of the vehicle. But as a right-handed shooter, what do I have? I've got high center chest or Temple Index. Now, high center chest, as long as I can clear the steering wheel, is a great place to keep the gun. But if I can't, if I'm in tight quarters, if, if it's a small compact car or something like that, and I can't keep the gun high center chest, my only other option is to either bring it all the way around the steering wheel or go temple index until I exit the vehicle and then get online. Rearward movement is basically gonna be the same thing. Get backwards as fast as I can. So, defending outside the vehicle, if I haven't even accessed my vehicle yet, um, and I gotta go to the gun, self finish shooting doesn't change. We still have close quarter shooting, we still have full presentation shooting, we still want to move to cover and concealment based on where our threat is. If I'm here, my threat's going to approach me from where? Pretty much that arc. Could he approach me from the other side of the vehicle? Possible, but unlikely. Uh, just because there's now a barrier between me and him, which I want. Anytime I can put a barrier between me and my threat, I should do that. Even if it's only the corner of the vehicle, I want to give some physical impediment for him to be able to access me, especially if I'm still reacting and going to the gun. Now, once I've got the gun out, I can kind of make my decision based on his reaction to the gun. If it's a situation that warrants immediate gunfire, we're not going to worry about it. But if he's got a knife or a bat or something like that, and I get the gun out and he's still pressing me, I can get around the rear of the vehicle and engage from there. Because at least from here, it's not cover, it's concealment. But since he's got a knife, it's pretty reasonable cover. Because he can't knife through the vehicle. Um, at least he shouldn't be able to. So I've got a barrier between me and him. If he presses me, I can continue to come around. Uh, if it starts from back here, you're loading stuff in the vehicle, the situation is gonna be dependent on which way you go, but we wanna move away as long as it makes sense to use the vehicle as a barrier. If he's got a gun, my first concern should be to put rounds on threat and then move to cover as possible. That makes sense? Uh, obviously, gun takes precedence over knife or bat or something like that. I got to put rounds on him because he has a firearm. His his uh, his ability to hurt me is functionally infinite. For the sake of conversation, as long as he can point the gun at me, he can hit me. Whereas with a knife or a bat, he's got to get close. He's got to physically be able to touch me with that object to hurt me. Um, if he approaches, if I'm able to angle, can I go under the vehicle? get shots on the feet, something like that. That's something to think about, especially if he's got a gun and we end up in a gun battle back and forth across the car. Do something he doesn't think is gonna happen. Drop down. If you got, especially a higher clearance, like an SUV or a truck, you can get those feet. Get down on the ground, go go into a, a fetal position or what have you, or whatever you gotta do to get that gun in there and just shoot the motherfucker in the feet.
The greatest aspect of this system is validation of skills. Both those you brought with you and those that you were instructed in in this class. Your bad guys are not paper targets. They're not going to face you full frontal presentation. They're going to move. They're going to use cover. They're going to use concealment. And they're going to do things you might not expect. This is as close as you can get to real life. Oh, shit. Seatbelt. <laughs> Fuck the police. <laughs> oh, the hell are we going then? Huh? We going to get something to eat or what? Yeah, we we're headed to a restaurant. Hey, you got a guy in back. Give me your fucking money! Give me your fucking money! Can you drive away? No. Alright, so I'm what are you going to do? Don't move away. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it's not turned on. We're just sitting here at this light. Um, seen any good movies lately? No. Yeah. I don't really either. I want to go see Godzilla, but I yeah. haven't had a chance. Of course, it just opened Friday, so I guess. Yeah, I know a lot of people have gone to it. At a time. Yeah, you know, big giant lizards destroying buildings. Got a weird guy walking up on your side of the car. Oh, yeah. Looks like a homeless dude. Yeah. What's he doing? I don't know. Hmm. Watch out, Bill. Watch out. What is he doing? Watch give, me oh, give me your fucking money! Give me your fucking money! What are you gonna do now? What are you gonna do? Thank you. 